All right, so in this video, I want to talk a little bit about the kurtigan lin partitioning heuristic and graph partitioning in general. The partitioning problem is you've got a graph, a bunch of vertices, a bunch of bridges, and you want to find an arrangement of these vertices so that you've got roughly half of them on one side, roughly half of them on the other, and you minimize the number of cut nets. Cut net is a net that spans from one side of the partition to the other. So I've got kind of one here, two on this edge, three on this edge. And I'm allowed to move the vertices back and forth from one side to another. And the goal is to find the arrangement that has something on each side, but minimizes the cut. So I've got another cut of here, three here, three here. I move A over there. I've got a cut of three, another cut of three. And it's not always obvious the best way to get a cut. But here, try to... Find the right answer here. There we go. Cut a two. There are lots of cuts with three, four, or five, some good partitions, some bad partitions. And the challenge is for a very large graph, finding the right answer. For something this small with only five vertices, there's only 32 combinations. We could work through all of them, find the best one. But as the graph gets larger, you can't do brute force anymore, and you have to have some sort of other method. This is an NP-complete problem, so there are no known polynomial time algorithms, but there are some good heuristics, and Kernighan-Lin is one of them. For most partition problems, you'll also have fixed vertices. So you'll have some fixed vertices, x, y, z, over here that you're not allowed to move, p, q, and r, they're over here that you're not allowed to move, and things in the middle that are movable. And so the problem might have a bunch of vertices, only some of which you're allowed to move. And again, the goal is to have roughly half of them on either side so things remain roughly balanced. So let me dive through the Kernighan-Lin heuristic. And this is from Bell Systems Technical Journal, 1970, really one of the first really good partitioning approaches. The folks at Bell Labs, Kernighan-Lin, they were doing circuit design, trying to put process or components onto circuit boards. And so the goal was to decide where do all these circuit elements sit so that we minimize the number of wires going from one circuit board to another. Very practical problem. And the key ideas out of this, they're going to start with a random partition. They don't know any, where any of these vertices are going to sit, where the best place is. So they just roll the dice, throw them wherever they go, get roughly 50% on each side, and they're going to use that as a starting point. And then they'll run through a series of optimization passes. And what they're going to do is select a pair of vertices, one from each side, where you can swap them and get an improvement. And they're looking for the maximum improvement possible. What they'll do is iteratively swap a pair, lock that pair into place on their new sides, and then they're going to keep going. Once they've run out of things to swap, they'll roll back to the best configuration. And if they've improved things, they're going to do another pass. So this whole business, they're going to do it again. So let me walk through Kernighan-Lin in action. All right, I've got a simple graph here, and the right answer is screamingly obvious. I'm doing it something this simple, just so it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. I've got six vertices, and suppose randomly we start off A, B, C, D, E, and F. And what they're going to do is look for the pair to swap with maximum gain. So I've got A, could swap with B, could swap with D, could swap with F. That's this first trio of possible swaps. And A swapping with B, so if I move A over here, B over there, I went from four edges cut down to three. That's a gain of one. I go back to the original configuration. Again, I've got four vertices to start. If I swap A and D, so if A goes over, D goes over, down to two edges cut, that's a gain of two. You can work through each one of these combinations, and you chunk along, and you know, it probably jumps out at you right away. Swapping E and B is actually our best choice. If I move E over here, B over there, down to kind of zero, gain of four. That is the best thing that we could do, and that's actually the first move that Kernighan Lin, the heuristic, would move. So B moves over, E moves over. We're going to lock them in place. We're not going to move them again, at least in this optimization pass. 
And here's something that is a little bit counterintuitive. It's a really key idea to Kernighan Lin. We're going to do what we're call, we'll call hill climbing. I've got A and D. I can still swap. I can move A and F. I can move C and D, C and F. All of these vertices are still unlocked. Gain for each of these is negative 2. I make things worse by 2. So if I move A and D over, increases the number of cut edges by 2. Kernigan Lin is going to do this anyway. We're going to swap A and D, make things worse, and then we're going to lock those in place. Only one pair left to swap, C and F. This is unlocked, this is unlocked. We're going to move C over, F over, gain of 2. Or a uh, makes things worse by 2. And so what's happened in this Kernigan Lin heuristic is we started out here with a cut of 4. That's a cut of 4. We swap B and E, that takes us to here. Cut a zero. Got A, B, C, D, and F. Then we're going to keep on going. Swapping, uh, what was it, uh, uh, A and D. So these guys go over, up to a cut of two, and then back over here. And we wind up with basically the mirror image of where we started up. That's where we wind up, mirror image. Cut of four, starting, ending. We don't have any fixed vertices outside the graph, so it's usually a mirror image once you're done. And cut has gone from four, down to zero, up to two, back up to four. And here's the key idea from hill climbing. So why don't we just stop here after we can't, and if we can't find anything better, just stop? There are gonna be lots of graphs where if you stop too early, you're gonna miss out a, on a better solution. And here's a simple graph to hopefully illustrate that. I've got a bunch of vertices connected here, a bunch of vertices connected here, here, and here. And I've got a cut of two right now. And it should be obvious that if I go horizontally, I've got a cut of one. So there's obviously a better answer. But if I want to get to that better answer, I've got to move something over and make things worse. Here, I've got just one edge cut. Boom, I've gone off three. So I've gotten worse here. And if I want to get to the best answer, I've got to pull a bunch of stuff over from here. And then I've got to pull a bunch of stuff over from here. And each of these steps, sometimes it's going to be making it worse, sometimes it'll make it better, until we finally find our way to the better answer. And so you can't always just do the thing that makes uh, the problem look a little bit better. Sometimes you've got to make it a little bit worse in order to find a good solution. And so this is the idea of hill climbing that came out of Kernigan Lin. You start off here, and you might find a swap that makes it a little bit better. You might find another swap that makes it a little better. And then you might be out of gas. You might see nothing that makes it better, but you keep on going, swapping something else, and it gets worse. And then once you've done that, you might see something better. And it gets worse again, might be a little bit better, a little bit worse. You can go up and down, zigzagging up and down, making things slowly either better or worse. And so the idea with this kernigan lin heuristic is we've got these little hills and we want to climb over the hills, hopefully finding a better solution on the other side. This is a contrast to what a lot of people did with just straightforward greedy algorithms. And so that's sort of the kernigan lin approach. Uh, the really big ideas, they're starting off with multiple random starts. You start with random arrangement and you wind up with a dis different solution. And really, kill climbing is a killer idea out of this, with multiple passes. This was the first good heuristic uh, partitioning algorithm. Uh, if you're smart with how you update your costs, you can get something like n squared log n for each pass in practice, n cubed if you're not uh, really careful. Either one of these are slow. There are faster, good partitioning algorithms, but Kernigan Lin is a good one to know as a sort of foundation, and the hill climbing idea is absolutely pure genius.